Over the next couple videos, I want to try to give you a little bit more of a concrete view of the variety that we can see within data structures. So there are some data structures that are very simplistic in the sense that they will just store data. And we don't have any notion of the behaviors that should be performed on that data. But then we would have data structures that have a very rigid structure on how that data is stored and how you should be able to manipulate that data. So to give you that, that higher level picture, I'm going to be using some examples out of C++ language. So we're going to talk about arrays. We're going to talk about the array object that we can get from the standard C++ library. And we're going to also talk about vectors within C++ and how we can see that data structures will sit more on a spectrum. So in this video, I want to talk about your built-in array with C++ and the array object out of the standard array library. Before I go into talking about the standard array library object, I want to remind us what arrays are. So an array is a linear data structure of homogeneous data that is static. So it is sequentially stored in memory. Once we set its size, we can't change it, and it will only store like type data. So what you see here is the website c++.com, and it's a website that I use for getting a lot of information about C++, the, the library, uh, all the different classes that are there, the prototypes for the classes, and other information regarding C and C++. And what we're looking at here is the definition or the overview of the array as from the standard library. So we can see that within this array class, we have a fixed sequence of containers, and they hold a specific number of elements in a strict linear sequence. So from right there, it sounds like an array. And this is very much going to be like an array, just some slight differences. And so if we scroll down a little bit in here, uh, we can see that all the elements are in a strict linear sequence, so they're sequentially stored. So OK, it's both of them are linear data structures. It's continuous storage. It's fixed size. So it is a static data structure. And really, the only difference here is when we go to define it, we define it with the type. So we can have an array of integers. We can have an array of doubles. So we know that it's homogeneous. So, so far, this is matching array and std array are the same. And then we give it the size of the array, because obviously it's fixed. But if we keep going down, now we see some other member functions, things that we can actually do to the data structure itself and work with the data. We can get the size of it. We can get the max size of it, so the size of the, the array itself versus how many elements are in the array. Um, we can get different locations, right, which we could do with the regular array. We can swap elements within the array. So while this is still pretty simplistic of a data structure, not only are we storing data, but we have some functionality on top of that. We have some additional data, too, in terms of now we know the size of the array. So this is a little bit different than the built-in array that you would see in C++, but you do get some extra functionality. So if you find that you need that extra functionality, then maybe this is something you're going to want to use. Now, the other reason why I want to show you this website is because there's a lot of neat aspects to it. So if we jump over to the actual implementation of the array, we'll see a couple things. One, we'll see here that this is telling us that this only exists in C++ 11 and on. So if you try to compile something using this code um, with C++ 98 or some other older compiler, it wouldn't work. But if we come down here, we can see some examples of how the array is declared and how we're going to actually be able to manipulate it and use it. Furthermore, I really like that we have the ability to jump right over to an online editor and we can start playing with it. So as a newer student to computer science, you're going to be looking at a lot of these websites and trying to figure out, well, how do I do this? How do I do that? And you're going to find other functions and parts of the library that you haven't seen before, but you're going to see if you can use them. Now, one approach is let me just copy and paste it, throw it in there, see what happens. And that's the approach that most students takes, take, but it's a dangerous approach because it might work. You might close up and say, I'm done, move on. 
Well, then when you have to do it again, you didn't truly understand it. Or it might not work, and you might have broken your code even worse. So what I strongly recommend you do whenever you're looking for new things or you're thinking of using new things, put it into a different editor, test it, play with it, make modifications. Okay, I think I understand this, but what happens if I leave this out? Do I have to give it a size or can I give it a size later? Right Now, of course, some of that will be defined in the text above here, but it can't hurt to get in there and start manipulating it with yourself. And once you figure it out and you're comfortable with your understanding of that particular function, that particular class, then you could put it into your code if it's appropriate to put in your code. So in this video, I really wanted to cover the differences between array and the array class that we would find within um, the C++ library and also introduce you to the C++.com website very briefly. I might have some more videos of it but you will definitely see this in other videos. So just as a recap, both the standard array and the built-in array do the same thing in terms of data structures. They will store sequential data in a linear fashion that's static and homogeneous. But the array that is built into the standard library will give you some extra functionality and a little bit extra information of the data structures data structure itself, mainly the uh, size of the data structure. So again, this is kind of takes us back to the previous video where an ADT can be implemented in multiple different, different ways. So right now we've seen two different ways that we can implement arrays.